Hey, hey, folks, welcome back to another episode in the Club Rouge career mode. Yes, we are still here despite having won the championship uh, last season. I haven't decided to leave. There was a couple of jobs available, nothing too good. But what I think I'm going to do is regardless of what happens this time, <coughs> we're going to go back to Nice. Nice is going to be the next club that we're at. I don't know how we'll do it just yet. I might have to play around with um, a few things and might have to cheat to get back there, but so be it. Next time you, um, not the next video obviously, but maybe in in January, or maybe we'll just tough it out and we'll just do a whole new season. We'll see if we can win the Belgium Championship again and go from there. Anyway, so new season, obviously. We've got some new signings, but first off, I want to go over our Champions League group stage draw. We are in Group D. We've got AC Milan, Borussia Dortmund, and RB Salzburg. Tough group. You can already see Milan has beaten Salzburg. 2-1 in their first game. we got Borussia Dortmund, which we'll be playing today. Then Salzburg, then Milan, then Milan again, Salzburg, and then... Or then Dortmund and then Salzburg at the last game. So, if we have a look at all the groups, with have actually, whoever this team team is, have actually won. I didn't see, who did they, who did they beat? They beat Galatasaray, really, wow, good on them. They, whoever they are, they've got Bayern Munich, Manchester City, Galatasaray, Real Madrid, Juventus, AZ, and Basel, Arsenal, Atletico Madrid, Lokomotiv Moscow, Toulouse. So you've seen our group. Then you got Group E, Man United, Lyon, Feyenoord, and Red Star. Not too bad. Barca, Hertha Berlin, Shakhtar, and Genk. Porto, Chelsea, Lazio, Villarreal, Inter, PSG, RB Leipzig, and Zenit. So, yeah. There's a few tough teams in the Champions League. I think if we can get uh, some good results, obviously we, the game against Salzburg is definitely a six-pointer. We have to win both those games because I can't see us getting hugely positive results against Dortmund or Milan. So if we, we really need to get those six points from Salzburg so that we can either drop in to the Europa League or if we somehow have a miracle and we somehow get past through either Borussia Dortmund or Milan. I don't know who is stronger at this time. See, the game has changed quite a lot in the, what is this, our 10th season? That's the 29-30 season. So, yeah, it would be the um, our 10th season in this save. So, a lot has changed. But anyway, that is enough uh, rambling of the Champions League. Let's get into some of the signings and departures. Our biggest departure this season is Efrian Alvarez. He is gone. He's off to England to play for Aston Villa for 52 mil. Not a bad deal. He is worth a bit more nowadays. 64. Still 27. Played 130 games for us. He didn't really feature too much last season. He got 6 assists in 10 games. He was pretty decent, but I did have other people that I did prefer to play over Alvarez as well. So, he's off. Wish him all the best. Joining him at Aston Villa, actually, is Panagotius Ritstos. Again, sold him to Aston Villa for 32 mil. Not bad. He is worth a little bit more, but he is 31. He is getting on a little bit. Spent a decent amount of time here. At Club Bruges, again, didn't he play him a huge amount. He did play a bit more, 18 games. He wasn't too bad. Obviously, bringing in uh, Morel and Lauenberg, getting them through is more of a youth sort of um, change going on here. But yeah, maybe he'll do something decent in the Premier League. I mean, he's almost got 100 caps for, for Greece, which would be quite cool. Get 100 caps. Don't know if he is retired from international duty or not. He's only 31. He's probably still got something in the tank. Anyway, he's off. So we got a bit of money for him. So yeah, Ritstos. 
Fran was uh, someone who was planning on using this season, actually. He didn't play too much for us. Last season, he was out on loan at Khan. He played 17 games for them, scored four goals, wasn't too bad. He has only been with us for three seasons, and he's only managed to make 13 appearances for the club, which is quite sad, but came through at Levante. Um... Went to Barcelona for 5 mil, went on loan to a few places, we bought him for 4, we loaned him to Khan, we made a good bit of money at 1.5 mil for the, the loan fee there, but then we sold him to Torino. Um, I was actually going to use him this season, because as you'll see, there's a few other people that have left the club as well. Um, yeah. Uh, someone else came in for him, and he he, I rejected it because I wanted him to stay, and he said, I'm sad that you rejected the bid, I want to leave. And I was like, okay, if someone comes in and pays this amount, then you can go. And they came in, and it was Torino in the end. He picked Torino. There was quite a few clubs in for him. He's valued a bit more than that, but he is getting a bumper pay packet on 165k. You know, he's a decent player. Don't know where he would have, um... Uh, don't know where he would have fit, or what he would have done, if he would have done any good for us. Um, he likes to argue with officials, so maybe not. Uh, but, yeah, decent bit of profit for him. I'll try and get through these a bit faster. Jordan Bernard, valued at 50 mil now. He has been gone, and we sold him for half that, 25 mil. Someone I only brought in, well, uh, no, I didn't bring them in. They were brought in the season before I arrived. So they were brought in for 20, 10 mil, should I say, sorry, from Leon. And then, obviously, last season, he played decently for us. He only scored one goal, got two assists, but he, but he got enough. Caught the eye of the people at Leeds United, and off he goes. 25 mil for Jordan, and you're yeah, not a bad, not a bad player. Our backup goalkeeper, Louis Botlol, as you would remember, he is finally off. Um, six foot six, damn. He is off to Toulouse. So we bought him in a couple of seasons ago, 2.1 mil. He's a decent goalkeeper. Didn't really play for us too much last season. I did play him in 14, but obviously we've got OG. He's a superior keeper as well. Yeah, wish him all the best at Toulouse. One of our promising um, youth prospects, uh, Yaniz Servius. I uh, don't know, we sold him to Arsenal only for 5 mil. That was a struggle to get 5 mil out of it. I rejected the first offer that Arsenal came in. He was gutted. He came to me, he's like, why'd you block my move? I really want to go to Arsenal. I was like, oh, okay. I was like, fine, fine whatever. So I told them if someone if they bid again, then I'll accept it. And they came in, managed to get them up to five, um, and apparently now he's worth twenty six, which is a bit sad. But I did give him a couple games before he left in the league, so that it looks like he has played for us, and he gets on the name, he gets his name in the history books for some reason. Yeah, that's a bit sad. He he is going to be a really good player, and he's uh, our loss is Arsenal's game gain. Uh, yeah, wish him all the best. Stajapovic, he is gone. We bought him in for 4.4 mil last season. He played five games for us, scored two goals. FC Lorient came in for five mil, so off he goes. <laughs> Made a $600,000 profit. Um, yeah, it just wasn't really in the plans. Like, he was probably a decent enough player to just, you know, have round... But yeah, played five games for us, and uh, he's off to Lorient, so good luck to him. Another youth player that is gone, uh, we sold him for 2.6 mil to Gink. Nothing really to say about this one. Young Belgian striker, uh, born in 2012 and he's 17 years old. Jesus, that makes me feel old. Who knows what he's going to do? I mean, there's doubts over his potential, but, you know, if he sticks with it, he might do something. We'll have to wait and see. Kicking things off with the arrivals is Gregory Viator. 
So he is a left back. He's on loan from Borussia Dortmund, of all places. One of those players that is actually perennially loaned out, unfortunately, because he started his career at Gwangamp. He's played a fair few games in League uh, League 2. For Gwangamp, uh, then Chelsea bought him for 10.25 mil. He went on loan to Malmo. Uh, played, he's played a few games for Chelsea, about three, maybe a few more in the youth team. But yeah, he went on loan to Sweden. Borussia Dortmund obviously thought that was good enough and bought him for 32.5 mil to Germany last season. They played him four times that whole time. Three of them coming off the bench. They listed him for loan. I was looking for a new left back anyway. So I took the punt and we're going to take him on loan. Unfortunately, there is no minimum fee to buy him. Even if we did, we don't have the money anyway. We're just paying his wages. So 56k a week for a fantastic player. Valued at 76 mil, 6 foot, he looks like gold. So, hopefully, he comes good. He's played a few uh, a couple of games for us so far, and he looks to be really good so far. So, I'm happy with that. Welcome, Gregory. Another left back that we got in on a free transfer was Jose Gaia. I think I might have shown you this last season. Um... Yeah, obviously we had him at Valencia. He's been at Valencia his whole life. Last season, got loaned out. Left Valencia for the first time in his career. Went on loan to Stad Rene. Uh, unfortunately, didn't... I don't know how he did there. He played 26 games. So he did all right. He obviously played uh, once or twice. Well, or not at all for their, their second team. So apparently it counts as a... Uh, another team that he's played for but yeah we signed him on a free so um welcome back uh, to Jose Gaia 34 years old he isn't gonna play a hell of a lot but he is just one of those players that was so reliable here at, or not here but he was so reliable for me in the past at um at Valencia so I'm looking forward to seeing what he can do in Belgium another free uh transfer was another player that we had from the past Amindo Miranda uh, he's going to be our new backup keeper, and we're swapping one Portuguese keeper for another. Uh, unfortunately, he, is, uh, he hasn't played for us just yet, but he's only ever played for Nice. Played for their first team last season, 19 games, 26 in total, if you count all the different cups and all that. Time for him for a free, so look forward to seeing what he does. Got in this fella here, Polish striker. Hopefully, he can be the next Lewandowski. Uh, Camille Karachinski. Karinski. Karasinks. I have no idea how to say that. Camille uh, has come in from Kaiserslautern in Germany. Only 4.7 mil, and we loaned him out to the second division in the Bundesliga with uh, Wur Wurzberger. I hope I'm saying that right. I don't actually know. But yeah, he's gone there. So hopefully he does his bits, come back, and he can be uh, the next Lewandowski for us. Uh, we sung Scene, uh, another player that we are familiar with. Our new backup, or yeah, backup right back from uh, Singapore. We obviously had him at Valencia, I remember. Loaned him out a few times. He's literally got, gone out on loan for the last four seasons. We brought him in for seven mil. See what he can do in Belgium. So welcome. One of our bigger signings this season, but unfortunately I bought too many left backs and I had to let one go on loan, otherwise they would have just missed out and gotten really pissed off. Uh, Edward Redu Reduc Reducu? I don't know, we bought him for seven and a half mil. We've sent him out on loan to uh, Tenerife in, the, in La Liga. We'll see what happens. I honestly didn't i was meant to i don't know what i was doing uh i can't remember at this stage i thought i i think what i did was i bought these players before i loaned in viatar and obviously viatar is a really good player so i wanted him and so i had to let one of these guys go on loan so edward uh, unfortunately drew the short straw and he's off to spain we'll see him back next season hopefully who knows New destroyer in the middle of the park is TJ Ruffian. We signed him from Bordeaux for just uh, 8 mil, actually. Which is perfect. He started his career at show. 
went on loan to Udinese in Italy. It's been another couple of seasons with a uh, show. And then went to Bordeaux for 7.75. Uh, played a couple of seasons in France for their team, for Bordeaux. And then we brought him in for 8 mil. So welcome TJ Ruffian. He is a decent player. He's going to be playing a more of that deep-lying playmaker sort of role. Mainly right in the middle. We'll see what he ha what happens. Uh, but he is a really good player. He's played well so far. Apparently he's an attacking midfielder. Don't really see that if that's his best efficient position in the midfield. But yeah, welcome TJ. Now we get on to the exciting players. We've got Trig Gurevsky Eriksson. So he's come in from St. Etienne, who have made a really good profit on him. They bought him in for four point or 425k, and we've bought him for 27 and a half million. Yes. He's played one game. He's got one assist for us so far. He's playing on as a backup to Ken. Uh, so, yeah, we'll see what this Icelandic winger does. He's obviously played mo a lot of games for Iceland. Uh, 24 caps, 7 goals. Decent young player. Let's hope he gets better and uh, scores some goals and wins us some games. Welcome, uh, Eriksson. And now the big one. Elias Benali. He has come in from Manchester United to 59 mil. Yep, that is right. We splashed the cash on a new striker. Not that we needed to. Brakak Turk is still here. He's still a fantastic striker, and he has still been banging them in. But originally, back when the season, well, the save started, actually, he came through the ranks of Club Bruges. Man United obviously saw something enough in him. They bought him for 10.25 mil. He played in their youth team for a bit. They started to loan him out. He went on loan to Marseille, Valencia. He went on loan to Dortmund, to Norwich, to Lyon last season. And then, really, in Ligue 1 is where he scored most of his goals. You can see in his debut season for Marseille, first time he actually got a proper season under his belt, he scored 25 goals. He didn't do too badly at Valencia. He scored 10. He went on loan in Dortmund. He scored 15. 13 at Norwich and 17 last season back in Ligue 1. So hopefully he can do something here. He's already got one assist from the first game that we played and back in pre-season. He was doing doing pretty well uh, as such as well. Uh, when I saw him on the transfer list, Man United only want 59 mil. I was like, oh, could give it a go. See if he wants to come back. Probably doesn't, but he did. Look at that, he's got dribbling, finishing, and first touch. All is 16. His composure is 17. Gr green acceleration, agility, balance is good. Jumping reach, natural fitness is pace, stamina is strength. He's a really, really good player. So, unfortunately, he has just spent most of his life out on loan, so we're going to change that now. He's, well, hopefully going to play more than one season here. Who knows? He is a really good player, and he's still really young. He's still only 24 years old, so we'll wait and see what the future holds for Benali. Right, as we've been going for quite some time now, let's have a quick look at some of the results that have come this way. So, 1-0 victory in our first game to kick it off. Gink we drew with Michelin, 7-2. Fantastic result there. Pedersen actually scored Five in that game. Pretty ridiculous. Standard Liege was a 3-1 win. We then drew 0-0 with Wasland. And then their last game, KVC Westerlo. That was a 5-1 with Brack Akturk actually scoring five in that game as well, who has got a fantastic goals to game ratio. If you have a look here, 33 appearances, 23 goals. Even at uh, Bayern 2, he's got a great ratio. You know, 48 to 30 goals. 130 games in total between seven clubs, and he scored 72 goals. He is brilliant. Someone with 12 finishing. 16 first touches. Kapoch is 15. You really wouldn't think that, but yeah. Anyway, that is enough. We've got the team set up. This is who we're going with Rusev, Lauenberg, Vallejo, and McGlade. And we've got. Osvaldo, Denise, Sori, Akor, Nascimento, Ken and Brack Akturk is uh, up top. 
Crusade. I was considering playing Benali, but I think I'll leave him on the bench. We'll see what happens. A lot of the players are tired, so um, not everyone is going to be fully fit, but that's the best team I could come up with off-camera before this game. Uh, I did see that we're actually playing on attack, so I will change that, because I think we'll go a bit cautiously, given that Borussia Dortmund have uh, more likely the better team. But there we go, kick off, let's get it started, our first game this season. A core I've already seen is uh, really bad for conditioning. We'll have to wait and see what happens there. Are we going to score first? No. Oh, we could. Barak Turk. He's made it his ninth goal of the season. With a great assist from Amin Akor. Fantastic. We're well nil up against Dortmund. What a time to be alive. And what a time to be a Club Bruges fan. Wow, look at that. Barak just jumps in. Boom. We are moving up to second place. If we can get another. Landers Denny's back to a core, back to a core. Denny's bracket to. Oh, he's missed it. It's gone past the post. No way. Let's get McGlade off the tackles. Cool. Obviously, we know Milan have obviously beaten Salzburg in uh, their game. So. Wait and see what happens here, but um, going well so far. If we can keep this up for the next however many... Oh my god, it's it's 2-0. Hachim Siori scores his first goal of the season. Great assist from Ken there. Let's have a look on the replay. Ken's just having a wee run. Siori's right there. Bang. Never saw it coming. Fantastic. We're up to first. I did not think we'd be beating Borussia Dortmund this easily. Wow, well, I shouldn't say easily, but you know what I mean. This is a great opportunity to show the pundits. There's a lot more to come. I was impressed with your efforts up front. Brackett Turk is a beast. Um, it's a core. I'm going to bring uh, Hussiemans on. I don't know if I'm saying his name right because to say. I'm sorry, do they have it? Oh, no, McRae, different person. I was like, wait, what? That's our guy. Didn't take him off, but no. Here we go. We're on the attack again. Maybe this uh, cautious approach is something we should play a bit more often. Thomas McGlade into Ken. Can he make it three? Not quite. Uh, Hachim Siori's got it, but it's gone up to Ingal. Wait and see, what is Ingal going to do? Misso. Ooh, Launberg clears. They're not even getting a corner. It's going to be a throw in. Ken looks like he wants to come off. Um, unfortunately, I don't have another winger on. Probably take uh, Brack off and just chuck on Benali, see what he can do. Don't know what I would do about Ken. I guess he's just going to have to suck it up. Uh, Lauenberg can probably come off now as well. He's getting a bit tired. I'm going to chuck on the youngster, Kevin Gerritz. But that looks like it is going to end it. It is going to be 2-0 victory. Oh, well, he's injured, but he's going to have to stay on. I mean, the game's over now. But that is quite, that is quite disappointing. But, you know, 2-0 victory for us over Borussia Dortmund where... I mean, they had shots. They had a lot of shots. They had more possession. But we uh, we got it. I'm pleased. Very, very happy. That helps us a hell of a lot in the Champions League. We want to get a bit further than we did last season. So we'll wait and see. But anyway, the episode has gone on long enough. Oh, Yuvo is going to be out for five to seven weeks. Don't worry, mate. Don't worry. Anyway, let's have a look at the schedule. Let's see what is the next game I want to bring you back for. Probably going to be the readable Salzburg game on the 3rd of October. So what do we got? Three games until then off camera. Yeah, we'll catch you then. Video's going on long enough. What are we recording at now? 25 minutes. I think that is a decent length. So I will leave it there. Thanks a ton for watching, folks. We'll catch you in the next one. Make sure to like, subscribe, all that good stuff, and yes, see if I'll be Salzburg.
very soon. Thanks a ton. Peace.